I always enjoy following a railway from the port of the town to the city because it gives you a real clue as to what industries the city was based on. In Wong Nui's case, it seems to be meatworks, refrigeration, engineering and rail. These days, what makes Wong Nui tick is not as obvious, but one of the major tourist attractions is the restored steamboat, the Waimari. So Graham, say in the 1900s and the turn of the last century, how would have someone got from Christchurch to Auckland? The only way to get there would, it would take five days, being by overnight ferry from Littleton to Wellington, Wellington to Whanganui by rail, three days on the Whanganui River, on, a, from, boat like on this. a boat like this, from Whanganui to Taramanui, and then you could catch the train at Taramanui through to Auckland. Uh, there probably wouldn't be a sleeper service then either. So it'd be five days? Five days. And now it's 80 bucks on Freedom Air. And an hour. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I don't want to sound like the promotional arm of the Whanganui Council, especially since the beer's a bit tricky, and considering my thing is trains and not boats, but the river boat up the Whanganui River. Fantastic. Fantastic. Should I say the third time? Fantastic. Well worth doing. The roads are Jeff got track point number 4848, Thursday, 13th January, two locomotive engineer 544 at Whanganui. <laughs> Is this the famed steep incline out of Whanganui, is it, is it? It's uh, very steep. Um, on, on a nice dry day today, like with the rail nice and dry, uh, we'll start losing speed. Now it's 40k area, but we'll probably lose down to about 25k. On a wet day, it'll probably go down to about 13 kilometers an hour on the rail. Yeah, yeah, just on a wet rail. And are there quite a few challenges taking the milk? I mean, it's a fairly special sort of a train, is it? It is. Uh, because of the length of the train and, and the weight of it, it's just, uh, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, I mean, going uphill, I mean, it's just make sure that, that you keep moving all the time and, uh, you know, make sure you make it to the top of the hill. Um, once you get to the top of the Westmere Bank, then the next challenge is trying to keep your speed at 40 kilometers an hour going down the other side because it's going to push you down. And you've got the two locos and 16 carriages full of milk. That's correct. You're clearly a long way from home too, which, time, which is surprising for me. Is there a story there? A friend of mine uh, that I met uh, just online uh, on the computer, uh, he was from um, Rangatea, and he asked me, oh, he says, you know, he says, my wife's got this friend and she's taking French. Do you speak French? I said, yes. I said, she says, can, you, can you help her with her French? I said, oh, yeah, not a problem. So I didn't think anything of it, and then uh, I wanted to go somewhere special for the Millennium. So I, I came to New Zealand, and my friend wanted me to come and visit, so I came to, to New Zealand for, for the Millennium and uh, met, you know, my, my future wife, which I didn't know at the time was going to be, but uh, we met and we really hit it off, and um, so yeah, so she came back to Canada about six months later, we got engaged, and I came back to New Zealand, we got married. Hmm. Wow. And you were driving trains in... In Canada, yeah. You would have. Yeah, I drove trains there for about, uh, oh, it'll be about 11 years before I came here. Hmm. This train, pulled by two engines with its 16 tankers, would carry about as much milk as 40 articulated milk tankers. So it keeps heaps of traffic off the road. So it's been a real success, both for Fonterra and both for the railways as well. These days, dairy factories, like the one I just came from, are huge multi-million dollar complexes. But in the old days, in dairy rich areas like Taranaki here, 
There used to be small dairy factories everywhere, like this one, which is the Tafiti Dairy Factory, which has now been turned into what I reckon would have to be the best privately owned museum in the country. And the guy here, real live wire, he's rebuilt a whole bush railway. It's fantastic. It's hard to imagine now, but before the turn of the century, this country was covered in forests. But this inconvenient clutter was quickly dispatched thanks largely to thousands of miles of bush rail. Some pulled by animals, others by steam locos or converted tractors. Forestry was a great employer of men in this free young country and the bush towns were our very own version of the Wild West. Had it been an aspect of colonial life that you'd been curious about? Always, yes. I mean, the, the idea of these little, especially the little in, industrial railways, the little narrow gauge railways, you know, from everything from building dams and bush logging railways and coal mining railways, they've just always intrigued me. It was really an extension of the New Zealand, so that we've sort of gone as far as we could really with just sort of stationary sort of exhibits and the sort of museum exhibits you have. And the idea was to sort of animate a little bit of heritage and a train is an ideal way of sort of taking a group of people and presenting a whole series of images and experiences and controlling their viewpoint. Huge amounts of camps of just men out there day Absolutely. and night just living yep. in the bush. Living in the bush. Six day a week. And it was dangerous heavy work, you know, it was really heavy work and very dangerous work. I had a, a group through um, from the Wairapa one day, a bus group, and there's a, a woman in that group said she'd lost five brothers working in the bush, five in a family. Testimony to how dangerous it can be. And heaps of missing limbs and, and things that's like that. That's it, that's right, you couldn't helicopter out these poor guys that get hurt. Nigel's museum is more than just bush rail. His dioramas and models of local history are truly outstanding. The scale and the details are the best you'll ever see. It's a bug, you know, it really is. This modelling thing is a bug. You do some, you want the next one to be better, bigger. You know, you look at other people's modelling and art and you think, I could do that. It's like the words obsession. You know, that's not a very nice word. <laughs> <laughs>